Hey, what's going on out there, everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer That Codes. In today's tutorial, I wanna walk you through all about the container, one of the most powerful tools to use when building a design in Gatsby JS. Now I'm using the React Bootstrap framework, but we're also gonna go back and forth into the traditional Bootstrap, which is at getbootstrap.com to learn more about how the container works. We're gonna flip back and forth both from the React Bootstrap side into the container side as we go into the CSS frame of things and just explain how the container works and why it's one of the most powerful tools to use when designing a website, especially in Gatsby JS. And with that, let's get started. Welcome everybody. Once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Designer That Codes. To me, design is really important and you really can't get to the design without at least some knowledge of coding. No matter how hard we try, and this is where the kind of the WYSIWYG factor comes in. And if you've been around in the 90s, early 2000s, yes, I am dating myself. The WYSIWYG or the what you see is what you get framework works, but I always find that once you have a better knowledge of coding, you can become a better designer. And so what I wanna focus on today is this tool, what's called the container. It is arguably the most powerful tool to use in Bootstrap. And let's explain why. I have my example right here on the right. Now, if you are watching this, I already have Bootstrap React installed, it's over here. If this is your first time watching my channel, first off, thank you very much. I do have a previous video that shows how to install React Bootstrap, so I'm not gonna go into that because I've already done that going forward. I do have my Bootstrap up here at the top, and I turned off for right now the container down below. I have in this design a div to div and lorem ipsum. I am running my server, it's running pretty good. Yes, I have not done a Gatsby build, no big deal, I'll get to that later. If I go and look at my actual website, here it is, lorem ipsum top left. And if you notice, if I move my browser back and forth, nothing happens aside from the tabs going back and forth. Let me just close this one a little bit so it's not in our way. That's because by default, the web is designed to work up in the top left. Bootstrap does use the default type that's on there, but that's about it. What I wanna do though, is I wanna actually have some control in order to call breakpoints for how my site moves. And this is really the crucial part is building a design that's responsive because we have to think about not just our computer any longer, but now our tablets and our, I'm gonna say cell phones, our cell phones, our mobile devices, all of those. So. Whenever I design, I always try to think about at all times, how is it gonna look on my computer, my tablet, and my phone? If we use the container, let's take a look and see how it works. So I'm gonna uncomment this. I am running VS Code. If you've watched me before, you know I'm a fan of the software. It's awesome and it's free from Microsoft, which sounds counterintuitive, but it is. So I imported the container and I'm gonna wrap the container around lorem ipsum. I'm gonna say, I don't know why I'm so far out. There we go. I'm gonna say container, and it has to open and close, and inside the container, I will paste back the lorem ipsum. So what will happen right here is eventually, there it goes, just took a second to kind of kick into gear. Everything should be working. Yep, we're good there. So if you notice now, lorem ipsum is on the left-hand side. And you know what, just for fun, I'm gonna take off. I thought this would be easier to understand, but I think you know what, it's gonna be more difficult. Well, let me clean up some work here and go back into my CSS and in my custom. There we go, we'll talk about this as we go along. So if you look at this design, I have a light gray color filling into my container at a minimum width of 1200. So what happens is, is past 1200 pixels, if you notice how my browser moves, there's an automatic width on both margins right and margin left, and it sits in the middle of the page. 
all from just typing container. Now, I did also type background color and the color black for type because I do have some what are called media queries to show how the breakpoints work. So what happens is if I go a little narrower into the design, here's the great part. Watch the design. I'm going to have the colors go from gray to a darker gray. Notice how it jumps. At no given time does this box hit the very edge of my browser. It always stays a little bit outside the area, and this box got a little narrower. If I go a little bit narrower, there we go. Another breakpoint hit. So if you notice, I went from light gray to a medium gray to a gray that's darker in that way. This is the last breakpoint before I switch my color to white. So if you notice at the very top, or actually at the very bottom of my CSS, extra large devices and up, 1200 pixels. Large devices, desktops 92 and up. Medium devices, tablet 768 and up. And down below are essentially mobile devices. You can almost go below 768. I went 576 is what they recommend. And then I went below 576 to 575. So if we look at it, when I drop down right here, here is the stage right before your mobile framework. Now notice something. Well, one, it did change white because I did have the color white over here on the left-hand side, but also that this is the last stage where there's space on either side. When it goes below 575, this is essentially saying go mobile or go one column. So when I go all the way down, there it is. I did pick a very dark color at the very bottom, essentially saying go black. So what that does is essentially I went RGB 50. Like I went way, 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 way dark here. But notice how there's no space on the edge of the margins that the black is touching all three sides, I guess on the bottom too, but there is an inherent padding inside of this design. And if we look at it, let me switch over to Chrome and pull up my inspector, and here we go. I switch back and forth between Chrome and Safari a lot. I guess I've used Safari for a long time, so it's hard to give it up, but the editing abilities and the inspect tool within Chrome are just fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is flip this to mobile, and there we go. And notice now that that lorem ipsum area, if we go and find it, I think we're almost on it. There it is, container. So the width is 100% and the padding is 15, 15 and margin rights are auto and auto. Translation, there's no space around the edges of my mobile design. So what that does is, if I go a little bit further, oops, let me flip this out of that mode. There we go. Notice how there's different breakpoints in the media queries. So as I move, 720 and forward and forward it goes. So the powerful tool about this is that I can move my container around. Now, if we go back to React Bootstrap, there is no container element in here. There's just, if I go to components, under the list, the container should be between carousel and dropdowns. That's because it's almost implied at the React Bootstrap level. If I go into layout right here, and I look at the grid system, the grid is based upon the container. So in order to have a grid, you have to have the container first and last. Once again, it says, you know, container. Containers provide a means to get center and horizontally pad your site's content. Use container for a responsive pixel width. So there's no real information about container. If we want to know how the breakpoints work, that's where we have to go back into the Get Bootstrap section. And in there, there's a whole section on containers. And this is where I used, if we go to Responsive Breakpoints, and I go right here, I use that same media query. And media queries are just designed to have designs change as you go up and down in browser width. Browsers are about based upon width, not about height, because obviously we can scroll and scroll and scroll until we're done. So I purposely used, if I make this a little bit narrower, 
There we go. So media min width 576 and media min width 576. I just took out the comment right here. Small devices, landscape phones, 576 and up. And no media query for XS since this is the default in Bootstrap. When it goes to Bootstrap, it's mobile first and tablet second and desktop third. And that's if you go into the very, very backstory, this is all because way, way back when, Bootstrap was designed for Twitter, which was really a mobile-friendly platform, and there you go. There's a little backstory and history, and if you ever have a question in trivia as where did Bootstrap come from, which would be amazing and <laughs> probably not going to happen, then in that case, you can say it came from Twitter. Twitter wanted to more normalize the web, and that's where the Bootstrap came to be. I really like containers because they just make my life easier. I know I can always put things inside of my container. So in this case with the lorem ipsum, now once again, I might not use all of these media queries. So for just fun, I'm gonna cut it out for right now, just so we don't see it. And if we look at it again, now it just moves. So lorem ipsum moves and moves and moves until we get too small. Everything I do, if I wanna have, let's go back and bring this information in and we'll just refresh in case it didn't kick into gear. I find with Bootstrap, I find with Gatsby JS, every so often it takes a few seconds longer for the CSS to kick in. So if I'm just, well, being lazy by half a second, then to me, yep, still nothing going on, but extracting the queries from components is all right here. That's how it works. And it looks fine. So going back to this piece right here, in terms of the Bootstrap, I don't always put the colors in because I don't need to see what color hits. But it says to me that I can move things around based upon the grid, which we're into in a later video, and it makes things easier to design for because I can think less about how it breaks and letting Bootstrap run everything as long as I have the containers in place around the content. And of course, with Gatsby JS, I have to also note the import container from React Bootstrap. Hope you've learned a little bit more about the container. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. If you've loved this, give me a comment. And if you didn't like it, I guess, give me a comment. Feedback is welcome and warranted. As always, I always try to stay on top of the latest design trends through coding. That's my plan as a designer that codes. And if you do like the content, smash that subscribe button, ring that little bell. And every week or so, I'm gonna have new design content through programming primarily in Gatsby JS. Thanks again for watching and have a fantastic day.